Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. We are finally going to test the TIG function of the Yes Welder CT2050. Before I start welding, this is the accessory TIG pedal, and my first impressions are good. It feels sturdy and the action is smooth. The cable is actually detachable from the pedal as well. Just wanted to point out that the design and build of the pedal seem good. And with that, let's get to the testing. First of all, this machine has some strange interface quirks. You can't just go back and forth from AC and DC TIG, you can only cycle through all of the modes in a loop. This may not be a big deal for most people, this was mostly annoying for me in doing my testing because I ended up switching modes often. It honestly still wouldn't have been a big deal, except that every time I cycle past the plasma cutting modes, the amperage jumps to 45 amps and stays there even once I get back to one of the TIG modes. Far more frustrating than this is the fact that even if I simply switch from AC to DC TIG, it switches out of foot pedal mode to the 2T mode, which is just an on-off setting. At that point, the pedal will still turn the arc on and off, but it won't vary the output. So if you forget, or if you don't realize the machine does this, as I didn't initially, it can lead to some messed up welds and frustration because you expect to be able to back off the amperage, but you can't. So just be aware that if you are using a foot pedal, anytime you change modes at all, you will have to switch back to foot pedal mode. As for output, I tested on both 120 volts and 240 volts. DC TIG in 2T mode has relatively accurate output right from the minimum to the maximum on both 240 and 120 volts, so that's good. On both voltages, it reaches the claimed max output and will go down as low as 6 amps, though at 20 amps and below, the arc makes some really loud high-pitched noises. That is a funny noise, no doubt about that. This is especially strange because at higher amperages, the arc is extremely smooth and quiet. In fact, above 20 amps or so, this thing has a pretty nice DC arc. AC mode doesn't fare as well. Minimum output is around 13 amps, though it has a higher start current than that and it seems to drop rather slowly. Still not too bad though. From 20 to 40 amps or so, the amperage seems accurate, but at 50 amps, a deviation starts to show up. And unfortunately, even in 2T mode, the max output with AC TIG on 240 volts is actually 180 amps, not the claimed 200. Output on 120 volts maxes out at 130 amps, not the claimed 160. This machine simply cannot provide the claimed output in AC TIG. But why do I keep specifying 2T mode? Well, that's because when in foot pedal mode, the output is lower. I don't know if this is a problem with the welder or the foot pedal, and I don't know if it's a problem with all of these machines or just mine. But max output is somewhat lower in DC mode and dramatically lower in AC mode when using the foot pedal. Before I discovered this, I was getting pretty frustrated with my AC TIG testing because it just didn't feel like it had the power it should, even taking into account the 180 amps max output, which I did already know about. Even with the output set far higher than I should have needed, I struggled to get a puddle going, and with pulse mode on, I could barely get the machine to weld 1 8 inch aluminum at all. Man, it just feels weak. It turns out that the max output on AC TIG with the foot pedal was closer to 140 amps. And when set at 180, I expected to be getting over 160, but was actually getting around 130 amps. 
Maxed out in AC TIG mode when using a foot pedal, my machine is basically limited to 1 8 inch aluminum. Aluminum just draws the heat away so fast that it takes a lot of amperage to quickly make a puddle without overheating the entire piece to the point that heat ends up, you know, building up and getting away from you. AC TIG simply requires a lot of amps for aluminum, and even at 180 amps, you'd probably struggle with anything over 3 16 of an inch in a lot of situations. So it's just something to be aware of. In DC TIG mode, it also outputs less with a foot pedal, but the difference isn't as dramatic, probably because the output is higher in the first place. Beyond that issue, all of the TIG features seem to work. Maybe some other time I'll set up the scope and see if the pulse mode and even the AC balance and frequency are doing what they say, but for the most part, it seems to work. Overall, the AC arc isn't very smooth, and a couple times it started stuttering, resulting in the output dropping even further. But mostly it was just frustrating dealing with the lower output with the foot pedal. But once you got past all that, it was totally usable to weld aluminum. The DC arc is very smooth, and it has the claimed output in 2T mode. Arc starts on both modes were consistent and reliable. So in the end, like the rest of the machine, TIG mode is a very mixed bag. The issues don't make the machine unusable, but they are frustrating and simply shouldn't exist in a flagship $1,600 to $2,000 machine like this. That's all I have for today, but if you have any questions or would like to see something specific tested with this machine, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.